Welcome everyone at home on Soul TV and everyone here in our audience. My name is Trisha Kelly and this is Tom Kelly. And tonight we have a very special guest on Soul Live. Um, and um, we're not quite sure where he is, but... Whoa! <laughs> made it! I told you I'd be here! <laughs> you gave us a scare there. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? Hi, Trish. Hi, uh, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> We're glad you made it. Just, just a little nervous. I was out in the parking lot rehearsing some lines. <laughs> <laughs> centered. You did some deep breathing. Right. Now centered. Let's begin. Let's do it. Okay. So if you haven't noticed, this is our good friend Steve Oster, he who is also Osmo. Osmo. Osmo Kramer. Kramer. On the show, there was... Cosmo Kramer. Some people say I look a little bit like the character. You'll have to decide for yourself. Thank you, Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, can we get a close up of, of this here? Show us. Show him, Steve. <laughs> yeah. My gift to you. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Well, along with this. <laughs> Shameless plug. This book is written, it's called How to Sue a Telemarketer. It's co-authored by multiple personalities. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Ostro, Esquire, and Osmo Kramer. Mm, let's just call him Juvenile. <laughs> but anyway, it is a wonderful book. It's all about promoting peace in the household one telephone call at a time. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who are a little short on income these days, it could be a very valuable tool for your library. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So let's go back a little bit. This is one of our wonderful community members who does yoga with us and comes to Yoga Church. And uh, we noticed, Tom noticed, his, the little resemblance to someone from Seinfeld. But we also knew that he happened to be an attorney. So how does one attorney become Osmo Kramer? In the words of a very great, great poet, one of my favorites, what a long, strange trip it's been. <laughs> Actually, uh, I started practicing in 1979, but in the mid-90s, although I was blessed with a practice down in Cardiff by the Chart House and the Beach House, mm. looking over the waves, <laughs> looking to see if Tom was out there surfing. <laughs> right. Just checking up on Tom. You know, I wanted a little more in my life. Mm. I wanted, okay, I was doing affirmation work. I wanted more fun in my life. And I can't say I manifested it right away because I like a little drama. And <laughs> so uh, I complained a little. And some friends suggested that you could do Kramer. Mm, I should be putting lays on people when they come off the plane in Hawaii. That's not possible, but this Kramer thing is really fun. I said, I don't know. They said yes. I said, I don't know. They said yes. And then came Halloween. Do you remember? I know that, you know, Halloween was Yogananda's favorite right. holiday. Mm -hmm. And so it was 1996. And this was before 2001, and SRF in Encinitas, it was wild. We had 10,000 people yeah. that would come down. We had the stages. It was, the whole community was yeah. there. It was wonderful. Yeah. And the costumes were so elaborate. Let me try it. And so I put, uh, at that time I wore my hair in bangs. So it, 
couldn't get it up really high, so I had to use egg whites to stretch it up <laughs> as high as I could get it. <laughs> and then with a little paint, oh, I, I didn't have sideburns, so I had to paint the sideburns on. And I took them, you know, I'm like an Aloha attorney, so I have all these Aloha shirts in my closet. And it just went over great. And it, it was just, it was wonderful. And then after that, there was a few charity shows. People said, oh, could you do that Kramer thing for the charity show? Ah, why not? <laughs> you know? And I did that. And then I met this guy who did George Burns. He played George Burns. And then he gave me all his agents and so I made this resume and you know it wasn't hard just knock out a resume and then somebody paid me for it <laughs> no that was great they actually, and then I started meeting other celebrity per impersonators I met Hawkeye from MASH mm. at that time there, there was all the presidents oh you hang around with Cher and Whoopi and and, and Dolly Parton and it's like I like this. And, and they're all fun in your life. It they're was all, fun. And they're all it, impersonators. They're all impersonators. <laughs> and it was, re it was just a lot of fun. And then came the final episode of Seinfeld. I had 15 offers from all around the country. New York, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, uh, Florida, Las Vegas, uh, San Diego, Los Angeles. And anyway, I ended up in Las Vegas. And... It just went over great, and I was on the map, and Kramer's this lovable character, and it was off and running. And you said you did about, by that time you were doing half law and half impersonating. Yeah, I mean, I was doing about four shows a month. One thing about law, I mean law, it serves a very good purpose. <laughs> There's clientele and you know, we have to, we live in this world and we have to take care of business. But nobody really calls on your lawyer for a good time. <laughs> right. When a lawyer walks into the room, it's like, oh, he's here. When you start doing Kramer and you come, oh, he's here, he's here. <laughs> and all the, the gigs that I was getting, they were all at really exciting destinations. Mm. And it was great. I mean, I could not have, I could not have choreographed something as grand wah. It was one of those things where I'd left it to spirit and spirit created something in my life which was so much bigger than my imagination could have dreamt at that time. And on the other hand, don't give up that day job. <laughs> because yeah. it's a funny thing, it's f when you do comedy, it's so much easier to be funny when you know that there's food on the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, anyway, but also I think in my chart, I mean, I have a little earth. I have in some, your, in, your in, in my astrological chart. chart. So I can't, when I start and get too airy, I gotta come down, I gotta, you know, I gotta put some feet, my feet in the, in the earth. earth. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, if, if the doing, you know, being on the road performing, I like coming back to my office, almost like doing crossword puzzles. Mm. You know, I mean, that's what law is. It's like playing a game of chess. Hmm. And the, yeah, so there was a comfort in doing, in, in being balanced. Mm -hmm. So it's left brain, right brain type of stuff. Yeah. And I, I like to think that there, there, there is a good balance for me. Mm. Yeah. I enjoy creativity. Yeah. And I enjoy having a purpose and solving, and solving the problems mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, you know, all of us could use a, an alter personality. It, whether, it be a, uh, uh, whether it be a, a celebrity or what. Because the personality that we, we go around with taking seriously isn't necessarily the one that's aligned to truth. So to get out of, your, out of the little personality and into, 
you know, something that brings you fun or happiness or whatever role you want to play is a good thing. And the ultimate, the ultimate challenge will be to play the part of an immortal soul. Yeah. I mean, right? it's, it's a gift. It, it, it's totally a gift to be able to have the opportunity to get out of one's box. Yeah, mm -hmm. there it is. Okay, as a lawyer, okay, I, I've been a sole practitioner. I've worked for myself for the last 30 years. I, control, I run the show. It's my office. But still, as a lawyer, there's, there's four corners. And even within my definition of my box, conscious or unconscious, I, there still is those, those little uh, parameters that, that, that I'm held to. To have the opportunity to step out into a, no, a whole nother yeah. role and break those barriers where fortunately my character was unlimited. The wilder, the crazier, anything that you could do, you know, was great. And what was beautiful was it, my, you know, just me as a, my, my nature as Stephen, the Esquire, I've always been a little clumsy. So if you had me over for dinner and you were serving, well, maybe if somebody else was serving the red wine. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I knocked over the wine, it's like, why did we invite Steven? But as that Kramer character, there goes the wine. And it's like, ha, 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 oh, you're, you're such a character. You're just like that character. So there's yeah. a lot of permission yeah. that I was granted. Did you, do you find yourself going into that, like say for instance, you were to knock over the wine, do you all of a sudden go into character? It's the best. Because <laughs> it's good, because you know, I'm dignified, that makes mistakes, you know? Mm -hmm. you're dignified, you know, then you have your undignified moment. Yeah. But when you're able to go in and out of it, and here's the, the irony of it is, if you can't tell, I didn't tell you I'm from New York. Oh, you are? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I thought you were from South Florida. <laughs> most people think, yeah, most people think I have that Southern draw. <laughs> <laughs> but being from New York, and just having that little, that little East Coast swagger, uh, the character, yeah, it, it, it just lends a lot, uh, some permission. A little, there's a little more permission. You get, you get some leeway. Yeah. Can, fortunately. Can you can you recall some some of the real outrageous one, one or two outrageous. Um, gigs that you did as Kramer or just situations that happened as Kramer. Yeah, outlandish things Outlandic, that you did I in mean, that character. Can you recall some of your favorite that, some of your favorite moments? Uh, I have to, well when or my you know my family is you know what are you doing? <laughs> you lawyer, you <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> here? But when I was on the Tonight show Ah, now my son's on TV. <laughs> so that added some credibility. Yeah. But the as the the, the character, they it, it, it is so great. Um, I mean, there, there's times they put me in a room. There was this wonderful riding club from Orange County, and whatever happened, what were they called? Uh, there was. It was a riding club. Anyway, the, the ladies get together and they brought in Kramer and Billy Crystal. Oh. <laughs> well, Tom could do really? Billy Crystal. <laughs> That's a uh, big But this is a family show. So let me tell you about another gig. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that okay. one. <laughs> but when you, when, when you, when you hang out, Okay, okay, Can I, there, was, there, was, there was a gig. We were in Tucson, Arizona. It was corporate. And I'm hanging out with Dolly Parton and Whoopi Goldberg. The three of us are in it. And I'm telling you, Tom, Whoopi and I, no, uh, Dolly and I, we have this thing going, this connection. It was so hard to try and get rid of Whoopi. 
But <laughs> stuff. I mean, <laughs> they just they, they roll the. It was just great. And then you start, you know, when you're hanging out, you know, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if you look on my phone, you know, Sean Connery, Tina Turner, and these are just all great, great people. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, when I have a gig, you're paid to be a celebrity impersonator. Mm. Mm. The accent is on celebrity, no accent on impersonator. Mm -hmm. So I am a celebrity. I am a cele I am a celebrity. Yeah. Being a celebrity, if you tell people want, people want to be around celebrities. Mm -hmm. If you tell them you're a celebrity, they will believe you. And they will be disappointed if you tell them, ah, only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so right. once you, so right. the, 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 there's an art <laughs> to denial. People that, oh, are you the real one? Are you the real one? Oh, I am real. And th it's, you just, go, you just go with it because you don't want to disappoint them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because once you got it going, I, if I could just say, there's this, there was this one gig, it was up in Beverly Hills. And there's one lady up there, it's Beverly Hills, I think the Beverly Hills Hotel. And this lady, you could tell she's had her face done, she's had all her body parts done. And she comes up to me and she goes, you're good, oh yeah, but you're good, but I know you're not the real one. <laughs> and it was spontaneous, like ma'am, out of all the people here, I'm not so sure if you should be telling me who's the real one. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of my career, you know, it's one of those spontaneous rehearsed lines that you always keep in your back right, pocket. Right, yeah, yeah. You want that to come out spontaneous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when it came out the first time, it was the best. <laughs> <laughs> do you know the, the actor that played Kramer on? I know Michael, I do. He's a great guy. He got himself into a little trouble a few years ago. But I do know before, the, before he would go on to Seinfeld, he would be dropping into yoga studios up in the LA area. Mm. And that, that, is, that is true. Wow. He was, he, he's, he's a good guy. He, yes, there was this little faux pas that he made. I think what everybody loved about him as a character, it was intense. Mm -hmm. When he was happy, it was happy. When he had an idea, it was big. And unfortunately, off camera, or when he was caught on camera, he got angry. And, you know, like his other emotions, he has emotions. It was intensified, and, mm. you know, he had, he had an issue from it. But mm -hmm. he's a good guy. He's a real good guy, Michael Richards. Mm. So now that there's more and more space between um, the time of Seinfeld went off, and now, do people still, do, do are people's memories a little shorter? Do the younger people not know who Seinfeld is? Or is it just that there, there's so much uh, reruns? Exactly. So many reruns. That has there's finished. plenty of reruns, and what, Sony owns the rights to Seinfeld now. It got, it got passed down. What they did is they took a bus, and they took the bus to college campuses, just so people would not to forget to keep this thing revived. And were you on the bus? I wasn't, but I went down to see it. Uh. I went down, they received me very well. Mm. Uh, but it, because of the reruns, that character will be around, I think, as long as I am on this earth. My buddy who plays Hawkeye from MASH. MASH has been off the air for- 20 years, 15? Uh, 30 years, Is that right? I think so, <laughs> wow. I think so. And Hawkeye, he's still there. And I try, I, you know, sometimes, I, every once in a while, I say, well, maybe it's time to retire. Like that old Al Pacino line from The Godfather, just when I think I was out of it, they pulled me back in. <laughs> and every once in a while, I think, you know, maybe I'm done, I'm just done. You know, I'm gonna cut my hair and I'm gonna just go out to pasture. And then 
you get the email, you get the call out of the blue, an old agent just calls up and says, uh, could you do this gig? Oh, please. You, you know, and you know, all right, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the hair stayed long. <laughs> so, yeah. What do you think Kramer would have to say about yoga? Or even, make it more personal, know. yoga church. <laughs> yoga church? Yeah. Give him a minute. He doesn't have it in his back pocket. Yeah. I think, I, I, I mean, because like I said, uh, Michael, before he would go on to the show, he would go, you know, he'd stop in at the yoga classes. Mm -hmm. If you know, like, you know, the, the character, it's studied, it's, he's centered. He's centered and explodes. So the best is he's in the moment. There's no way that you know. There's there's that moment when you're in the when you're in Kramer when you're in Kramer mode, you're in the moment, and that is it, isn't that? That's a yoga posture, mm. and his physical humor. How do you get your you know to do your body like yeah. that? You know, it is. It all comes. It comes with the with, comes with the you know the, the yoga technique. Yeah. I was I was actually mm -hmm. trying to help try to have you do a little of the shtick for me. That was Which my way one? of asking. Oh, oh, when I asked what Kramer would do say about yoga. Oh. Could, yeah, I was hoping you'd give us a little Kramer. <laughs> <laughs> Trish. Yeah. Before I came here, I got this massage. Oh, baby, right? I got this massage. She had these long, angelic fingers, and it went up and down my spine, and it started to tingle. Oh, baby, <laughs> I, I was centered. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a while, you know, but, but I, like the, the yoga and law, it's funny how the thing just, you know, they, they just weave, they ju it, just, it just weaves together. And, you know, so here, I mean, what, what's big well, in my life? You got here's, here's where it weaved together, right? Your law and your, your humor? Yes, yes. I mean, it, you think? there's sometimes along the way, there have been times I say, the law, it's such a tough road, but yet it's led me to the humor. And a dear friend of mine, uh, Larry Payne, who teaches, he's a part of your yoga teacher training, mm -hmm. he, we've been best friends for 25 years. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, uh, we talked about forming a organization called International Association of Yoga Therapists. It was a concept. He had an idea. Larry, it's a great idea. So it was Larry Payne and Richard Miller. They were the original directors with myself. I did the incorporation. It was like a little acorn that we put in the ground. This last uh, Labor Day, I went up to Asilomar, 20 years, the IAYT has been around, and it's now this international organization. Mm. And I got a chance to see how, you know, Spirit gave me the tools mm. to practice law so that I could meet someone like Larry Payne. Mm so that we could create this organization that now, 20 years later, we had people from every continent, people from India and Europe and Australia, Canada, mm -hmm. you know, North America, people from South America, mm -hmm. coming to, you know, to, to share yoga therapy. Mm -hmm. And to think that I would have that small part of it, if we, you know, I was, I mean, I was, I stepped back and, 
you know, you just, just look up, look down, look in, and just say, thank you, Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> Law, Esquire, and then Little Fun, you affirmed Fun, Fun, Fun. You've been to India, you studied the, the religions of the East and the West, and then, you, you know, this little bit of Osmo Kramer, and now here you are in this part of your life. What are you affirming now? What would you like to do in the, the next phase of your life? What, what, you gonna, would you share an affirmation? Because we know mm -hmm. from what you've told us, if you yeah. affirm it, it's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, inside of me, I mean, I, I, I like to make a public statement. I have a big heart. <laughs> I, have, I have a big heart with, a, you know, and there's a lot of love in my heart. I know that. And I want to share, I want to share that, you know, with, with, with a person. Mm. You know, my, some people say my standards are high. I mean, I come home, I have a chocolate lab, Amigo. Amigo. And when I come through Amigo. the door, it's like, you're home, you're home, you're home. <laughs> and maybe having a partner greet me like that may be a unreasonable. Yeah, right? But internally, I would like to have someone when I come home say, hi, Steve. You know, yeah. you know and in the inside, just saying, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And... It's, uh, it's, you know, it's happening, you know, it's just what's happening. Mm -hmm. And whether it's, at, you know, at, at Yoga Church or, you know, even at WA, you know, at the WA concert, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is what's happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And knowing that, uh, you know, she doesn't have a name right now, but it's, 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 it's in creation. Yeah. yeah. So. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was. <laughs> well, if you had your card, you could show it on the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tom has my number. <laughs> so, if you're at home and you're looking for love and you have a big card and maybe a cho chocolate lab to go with Amigo, if you have Amiga, <laughs> give this guy a call. Right? Or, you might be a fit. <laughs> and or if you are going through a serious time in your life and you need an attorney, but you don't want it to be so serious, see this guy. <laughs> Do you have people come to you because they might think it's to be a little lighter to have you as an attorney? Do you keep it lighter? I, uh, this is the gift. This, this, is, this is the gift that I have. And there is, when, when, you, when, you, when you're involved in a legal situation, right. Everybody's a little different. There's some people that really learn, need to learn how to let go. Yeah. There are some people that need to stand up for themselves. Mm. Some people need to maximize their monetary re return. Mm. Some people need to get on with their lives. Mm. I think I have, and this is, this is oh, wow. the, the blessing of meditation and yoga, is that I have the ability I think to be with somebody and really get a sense that to explore what it is the highest purpose. Sometimes monetary returns may be the highest mm. purpose, sometimes not. Mm. Sometimes standing up for yourself is mm. really important. Mm. Sometimes letting go. Mm -hmm. But overall, everybody has a different capacity. Yeah. But I think I recognize, and, and it's not all attorneys are meditators, and they don't <laughs> seem to oh. understand. Well, there's, really? just, there's a surprise. <laughs> they just you don't just see. <laughs> Didn't you tell us that you, you did a, a stand-up? You did, you did a thing for attorney association or something? You did, you did uh, cream? Cosmo. It was my toughest show. <laughs> it was my saying. toughest show. So here I am. I'm out doing Kramer. And I'm doing it for all these different corporations. Yeah. I think, you know what? The North Coast Bar, they, 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 they heard about me. They asked, would you just you know, do something for our Christmas party? <laughs> these lawyers, they're a great bunch of people. Yeah. But, boy, they don't laugh. 
what they do is they give you a verdict. <laughs> I give them my best material. I give them my best material. And I was on that day. <laughs> and they sit there, like, really stuff and go, that was funny. <laughs> Guy, a little feedback. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, then I had an opportunity. Uh, the reader did a very nice article on me. Mm. So right after the reader did the article, I went in, and it was a benign case. I mean, I wouldn't fool around. I mean, if it was a trial where it, there was really significant consequence. But this was a probate matter, and it was really just shuffling the paper, making sure the paperwork was right. The article was written. I come in, and there's the clerk, and she's like, oh, that's the one, that's the one. She says, do this, do this. <laughs> <laughs> and then the judge with his glasses sort of looks up and goes, Counselor, would you just do it? <laughs> oh, well. well, Judge, my client's dead. <laughs> You're sitting up there with those black robes, but you can't bring them back. <laughs> but you could make it just a little easier on us. Just sign that little paper. <laughs> you know, so it's all in a day of court. <laughs> it's beach law. Right. Beach law. Beach law. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Do you MC. have another book in you? Well, do you, I mean, this is a really cute idea. I'm, I, mean, I want to look for the page, my favorite page, mm. while you're talking. Another book. I mean, an attorney, yogi kind of concept or something. Book is a tough road. Yeah, uh, how long did it take you to, read, to write this? A long time. Yeah. I started writing. I was hot. I was really, really hot in writing. I would wake up in the, Latin, in the night, ha, 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 with these great little ideas. <laughs> write them down. I was on a roll. <laughs> but then I said, whoa, stop. I know if I go on if I go on The Daily Show, first thing that John Stewart would ask me is, have you ever sued a telemarketer? So I said, you know what? I need to do research. I need to have 10 cases underneath my belt. So then, I mean, it wasn't difficult. They just called, and I just followed what I did in the book. <laughs> took see? down their numbers, and they took down the information. Oh, God. I got 10 out of 10. I, I won 10 out of 10 cases. Oh, <laughs> and I'd like to thank all those telemarketers out there that paid their judgments because it helped in the publication of the book. Oh. <laughs> Another book. Oh, I like talking better than I do writing. The book, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it's not the easiest, it's not the easiest road. And once you write the book, then you need to get the message out. Yeah. Mm. And mm. there's a, I, I think I, I, I do like, I like performing, I like giving my heart. I like, I, I do like practicing law also. Mm. So, um, I will not close the door, but until Spirit speaks through me yeah. and he talks to me, it's sort of like the Moses example from Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Who, me? Another one? <laughs> Why couldn't you just ask me to free my people again? <laughs> Much easier. I see a, a, sh uh, a cute shtick, though, would be... Uh, uh, filming you as Kramer coming into a yoga environment, a yoga class. Or uh, teaching a yoga it, or class. You'll have to do that. Or, or, oh, yeah, why didn't we do that on April 1st? Can you imagine oh, yeah, April that, Fool's Day having you come in as, well, we'll get it. <laughs> we'll do it. Start coming up with yoga jokes. Put them in your pocket. Right. Okay. Right. Let me, when you mention that, it's a good time to take a good breath. Ah. Right? Teaching. I did teach for a little while. Did you? A little while. All right. I did. I, I took know. my teaching training through with Larry Payne. I figured. Right. All right. And I'm then in San Diego, I was teaching part time. However, out of respect for yoga teachers, I don't. I, I did not like. I, I did not want to be a part time yoga teacher. There's too many dedicated teachers 
who devote their life to it. Mm. And if you're going to do it full time, I totally respect that. And so I mm. just enjoy practicing okay. all over town. <laughs> yeah, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well. Well, what would be a, a message if you could receive a message? Sounds like you're very in tune to receive messages. What would be one that you would like to leave our folks at home with? You know, I mean, the, it was a continuation of Sunday's message about when something comes to you. Mm. A really, there's a, when there's a really big grandwa mm. that comes to you and you get that yes and then just watch for that but mm -hmm. and that little dance. Right. The world, you know, this thing is all about exploring just how great we can be and the opportunities happen. And just, we should all watch, you know, drama, opportunity, the greatness, and just mm -hmm. really go for it. Mm -hmm. Really just go for it. And, um, and that is what, um, if, I, if, I, if I could just really leave a message, is like, really go for, go for your dreams, because mm -hmm. they, they come true. <laughs> we are a living example. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>